Well, hello, church, and welcome to Burl Prez this morning. No matter where you are on your faith journey, we want you to know that you are welcome here. This is a new song for a new year this morning. This is called We Praise You. I invite you to sing it along with me. Let praise. Let praise be a weapon that silences the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it arise. Let praise arise. Sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. Sing with all we are and we claim your victory. Let it rise. Let it arise. thank you for this day that you have created in our lives. We thank you for our lives. With all that we are, with all that goes on, still, God, we praise you. Prepare us now for this message with Dr. Baird. This worship this morning is all in your glory, all to your son's name that we pray. Amen. Happy New Year! 2021 AD, Anno Domini. Do you know what that means, Anno Domini? It's Latin. It's the year of our Lord. I'm so pleased that Dr. Barrett's invited me to lead you in worship on this first Sunday of a brand new year. And I uh, have to say I'm a, a proud father. You know, Graham is so talented. His eloquence, his uh, musical gifts, his leadership, his administrative skills, and his love of the Lord makes him the perfect pastor. And I know you know that, but I uh, just makes me feel good to say it. So Happy New Year. This is a good time for us to think about the past and look into the future but you may be wondering, so what's so happy about the new year? Where have you been for the last 12 months? Are you not aware 
that the COVID virus 19 has been doing its damage throughout the whole nation? I am aware. Did you know that February the 6th, that Patricia Dowd, who was a 57 year old auditor down here in San Jose, died of COVID virus, the first American to have succumbed to that disease? Yes. And that since then, about 14 million of us have gotten this sickness. And they say about that many more of us are going to get sick. And that 270,000 of us have not made it through last year because of that virus. So you may be asking, so Happy New Year? Or you may say, what about the unemployed? Created part by the virus itself, there are 20, over 20 million of us who are without a work and job and income that had those things just a year ago. That in fact, 16% of us are unemployed. And some of that employment may be long term. Happy New Year. This past year have seen massive demonstrations. You may have been in some of them, or you certainly saw them. Demonstrations against the oppression, the, the violence of police against black people. You've heard the Black Lives Matter mantra. Reminding us that that monster called racism is not dead and buried, but still unfortunately alive and well. Happy New Year. And you may have your own recollections of 2020, times that were worse than you would have wanted, painful. So it's good for us to look at Scripture and ask ourselves, what does it say about people like us in our time? Where does our hope and our happiness come from? You know, the reality is not, is, of hope is not in wishful thinking. The reality of hope is in the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. I think back on 2020 and ask myself, well, what good can we see coming out of any of that? Part of that is scientists are smarter today than they were before. There are vaccines here present now to inoculate us against such a disease. Masks are taught us to be concerned for one another in a new and a unique way, teaching us how to live out Jesus' great statement, love one another as I have loved you. I would not want to catch virus from you, so I do not want to give you a virus from me. So I'll wear a mask and ask you to do the same. Or the mandated isolation. Oh, how inconvenient and it's awkward and even painful it has been. Yet it's created a new sense of relationships between certainly parents and children. I've never seen so many fathers and daughters and mothers and sons out riding their bikes together and taking walks together. I think our children and grandchildren are going to review 2020 is the best year of their lives. Well, yes, there are things about this last year about which we can say, and a new year is good. Happy New Year. The psalmist in the 42nd Psalm, written by King David in the year 1023 BC, is speaking about a time similar to our own. A time of unemployment, of oppression, of plague. And he's writing this psalm in a sense and a direction of hope. 
He is first of all opening this psalm by talking about worship. He begins this psalm, the 42nd psalm, and I would encourage you to, to open your Bibles and to follow along. The first verse begins, As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? When can I go back to church again? When can I meet with my friends in a Bible study and, and read the word together and pray together in person. And then David the psalmist goes on, verse 4, These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go with the multitude, leading the procession to the house of God, with shouts of joy and thanksgiving among the festive throng. This 42nd chapter, of Psalms is a psalm of memory. Throughout it, the psalmist remembers the good times, the active presence of God, the source of his life. This memory, it takes place inside and outside of worship, not just in those moments of meditation and prayer, but it's just noticing that God is active every single day. Yes, in 2020 and 2021, God does not slumber nor sleep. Memory forms our reality. And so King David gives us his solutions. Verse 5, Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. This gratitude and this joy is the result of memory. First, there's the memory of the works of God. God is at work. He writes in the seventh verse, Deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls. All your waves and breakers have swept over me. That brings to my mind the, the, the deep of Genesis, the very first verses of the first chapter of the first book of the Bible, where we are told that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And now the earth was formless and empty and darkness was over the surface of the deep and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Deep. The Hebrew word for deep is teom. It means literally chaos. No order, no structure. The deep darkness, no light. And it was over this chaos, yes, Chaos of plague, unemployment. And over this chaos, God's spirit hovered like a chicken over her chicks. A hen over her nest. And God's spirit hovers over our chaos. But second of all, the psalmist writes in verse 8, By day the Lord directs his love. At night his song is with me. Day or night, 2020, 2021, God neither slumbers nor sleeps. His presence is constant, says King David. Sir James Berry, who wrote Peter Pan, wrote also, God gave his children memory that they might have roses in December. Now here in Burlingame, we have a relatively temperate climate. And we've had beautiful roses, but not today, not in January. But they were beautiful in July. And it's because we can remember the roses of July that we can now have hope for the roses in June, this next June. The memory is the source of our hope, the promise. No matter what the absence or presence of the roses today, the hope is in the rose tomorrow. 
The end of every year is required for the beginning of a new year. So the mechanism for memory is actually a three storage system. First, there is sensory memory. That's very short term, in a click, in an instant. That makes it possible for us to see or to hear or to feel or to touch or to smell. Uh, that image comes quickly. We're not even necessarily aware of it. But they permit us to, to read, to recognize a friend, to, to hear and recognize the song of a bird, to put together letters for a word or a, on a street sign. And then there's the short-term memory. That is about 20 seconds long. And a short-term memory then is like keeping that memory long enough to dial the telephone number or to see the letters in a word to be able to pronounce it. And then there's the long-term memory. That's the storage system for information we want to keep for the rest of our life. And there are three stages of that. There is the classification, there is the storage, and then there's the retrieval. Whatever information that we decide we want to keep goes through those three stages. Now that is also the creator, or the creation of our personality. So that our personality is the result of the things we have remembered and then continue to use, which makes amnesia and Alzheimer's so despotic. You lose your personality. You lose your person. Your memory has gone. Now, memory is neutral either good or bad. It can be constructive or destructive. Destructive of personality and relationships or constructive of the same. That's the reason why 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter says, love keeps no record of wrongs. Don't keep record of wrongs because that destroys relationships. That's not love. Now the Hebrews understood that their future was shaped by those things they remembered and recounted. So if the roses become real in January, they might brighten an otherwise gray day. Resentments, and disappointments, and regrets, they can also ruin an otherwise bright day. The miracle of memory is one of the greatest miracles, but one even greater than that is the miracle of healing in the human body. This is a, a strange gift that God has given to us. When a child cuts a finger, suddenly they are surrounded by those who, who love them uh, with attention and caring. Now, the healing process is made up of a, of, of a five-sided uh, platelet that then rushes to the source of the, the injury. Now, one would think that when you cut yourself, you might just simply die because you just simply leaked your life out. But God has given us this means by which we can actually uh, heal the wound. So the platelets rush to the wound, and that's where the, the uh, red blood cells recreate a dam, and the white blood cells come, and they kill off all the bacteria and the viruses that are trying to invade the body, and then collectively it starts to put all across the top this, what we call the scab, and then there is healing taking place underneath that scab until it is complete, and then the scab falls off. Amazing! Now, when a child has wounded themselves, they discover they get a, a large amount of attention and caring. Oh, there, there, poor child. Oh, we'll take care of that. And band-aids show up and kisses and hugs. <clears throat> and then the child notices that when the healing starts, suddenly those kisses and those hugs and those, that attention just disappears. 
So they may be tempted to kind of pick the scab off in order that they can start the bleeding, which then attracts the attention they so much covet. We as adults may be tempted to do much the same as we get wounded. We want to keep those memories and we want to, we want to savor them and we want to let them be a continuing part. So because we get attention that way. But in fact, what the psalmist does, the psalmist reminds us that we have a choice. We have a choice. Our experiences are never one-sided. 2020 was not all one crisis because God was there and he is here today. Ruhal wrote a book called The Creative Years. And he told a story about a father and a son who went fishing. The boy, Brooks Adams, this is a true story, who was the, the great grandson of the President of the United States, and a prolific historian and, and a politician. He wrote in his diary after that day, went fishing with my father, most glorious day of my life. And it was such a significant memory for Brooks that he repeated that phrase or that reference again and again and again in his diary for the rest of his life. Now, coincidentally and unknown to Brooks, his father, Charles Francis Adams, who was the ambassador to Great Britain, also kept a diary. And on that day, when Charles Francis Adams went fishing with his son. He wrote, went fishing with my son, a day wasted. Now, Rue Howell says, what an insensitive man Charles Francis Adams was. And he probably was. But he might have also said, what an amazing boy Brooks Adams was. Because Brooks Adams retained that memory. And for him, that day was always the most glorious day of his life. We get to choose what goes into our long-term memory. Just in case we missed his point. King David concludes his poem this way, verse 11. Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed with me? It's a rhetorical question. Why? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. We have just concluded Christmas. And one of my favorite Christmas carols is Old Little Town of Bethlehem. And in that carol are these words. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. Indeed. All the hopes and fears for this new year are met in the Lord today. There has been alleged that there is this conspiracy where unseen forces are arrayed out against us. I believe that's half true. There is an unseen force out there, but it's not arrayed against us. It's arrayed for us. And his name is Jesus. And he's bringing his kingdom into this world. Our hope is in the Lord, said the psalmist. 
And it is there that we will find the ability to say, Happy New Year! Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, as we enter into this new year, may it be the most glorious year of our lives. Give us memories worth retaining and forming relationships and personalities that will glorify you. We pray, O oh Lord, that the year that has gone by may not be a year wasted, but a year retained to be able to strengthen and, in, and quicken us to follow your will. We pray these things in your name. Amen. In the darkness we were waiting Without hope, without light Till from heaven
Hey church, thank you so much for worshiping here alongside of us today and ringing in the new year with Dr. Baird. We want you to stay connected with what's going on here at Bro Press, and one of the best ways that you can do that is by subscribing to our YouTube page. Over there, we've got music from our worship team, sermon summaries that happened from the week before, and just overall updates about the life of our congregation. Make sure you join us right back here next week as Graham introduces our theme for 2021, the year of stepping out. It's gonna be really great and you're definitely not gonna to wanna to miss that. Now take this blessing with you into your day. I pray that the new year brings you peace and blessings and that you know you are loved by God. And there is nothing that we can ever do to change that. And we will see you right here next week.